that's an F. You know, they could have had him a lot later, so I'll meet them in the middle and give him a C. It's time to look at the AFC East. In my opinion, you might as well call it the AFC Reach. It seems like every team on day two in the AFC East, or Reach, whatever you want to call it, they reach for these picks. Maybe they fell in love with these guys, but I think they could have had them in later rounds. So let's take a look at and see which players were picked, which ones were reached for. You start off with the Buffalo Bills. Now, before we go any further, they have a lot of picks in the next day. Uh, they got six picks between the fourth and the seventh round. So they're going to be very active. It may allow them to make some trades. But as for the guys they pick in day two, you've got Cordy Glenn. I like this guy. Every now and then, someone's going to fall to the second round. Does not mean they're not first round talent. He certainly is. He's versatile, he can play tackle, or he can play guard, and I think he can do either one effectively. The Bills are just gonna have to figure out which one they want him to play. They plug him in, and he'll be ready to go. Now this next guy, TJ Graham. Now this one is interesting. I'm starting to think maybe they mistake TJ Graham with, I don't know, T.Y. Hilton, another guy that's a wide receiver. He's got two syllables in front of his name. Even T.Y. Hilton would have been a reach right here, but T.J. Graham, some people don't have him on the draft board at all. Uh, many have him in the fifth or sixth round. For whatever reason, they chose him with the third round pick, and so he's there. He's fast, and I guess we're gonna have to see whether this was a reach or was it a smart and savvy move by the Buffalo Bills. Now we go down to uh, South Beach. We take our talents there, and we have the Miami Dolphins. They got started with Jonathan Martin, another guy that slipped some people think that it was because he wasn't ready to play left tackle. This fits perfectly in Miami. He doesn't have to play left tackle. They have a great left tackle, Jake Long. So now he can play a position he'll be more comfortable playing. He doesn't have to face uh, the top guys on the defensive end spot. And so he'll flourish here. If he got drafted in the first round, he probably would have had to play left tackle and he would have been exposed. But he'll do quite well. Now, uh, Olivier Vernon, again, a reach. There were guys there at the defensive end, you know, maybe he should have drafted. Whether they like him or not, they probably could have had him later. At the very least, they could have traded down. Uh, he's a developmental player, someone that's going to take maybe a season or two to really get in the fold. But at any event, uh, once again, the AFC reach, uh, they reared their ugly head again. And then you have Michael Egner. Now, I like him. You know, when you're in this division, you see tight ends on a regular basis. You see what New England can do. Miami says, hey, we want one. Michael Egner. Uh, was very good in college. Lots of speed, lots of size. And I think he, be he can become a better blocker. He's gonna take a little uh, beating in that area, but he will get better. Now, moving on to the New York Jets. If we look and see here, uh, they have a lot of uh, compensatory picks coming up in the sixth round, the seventh round. No picks in the fourth and fifth because they made some trades. I like this one, Stephen Hill. He's from Georgia Tech. He's a wide receiver. He has lots of size. He's well over six foot four, it's 215 pounds, and he runs a sub 4'3", 5'40". Now that sounds familiar. Played college ball in Georgia. Lots of size, lots of speed. You may think of Demarius Thomas, but you're probably thinking about Calvin Johnson. Now I'm not coining him the next Calvin Johnson, but with the amount of speed that he has and that size, it's very intriguing. The only problem though, the Jets don't really have a strong arm quarterback to throw them those deep routes, but they'll work it out. I agree with the trade up. And I think Landon Stephen Hill uh, was a really good addition for New York. Then you go with uh, Davis, Demario Davis. Again, a reach. Is he an outside linebacker? Is he a defensive end? I think uh, his frame is gonna allow him to uh, transfer into that defensive end, maybe even the defensive tackle slash defensive end. But as of right now, again, he's a project player. We don't know what he's gonna become. And in the third round, sometimes you wanna have guys that at least you can say they can contribute somewhat in year one. I don't know if he can do anything in his rookie season. Now, last but not least, it's the New England Patriots. Now this is odd. We usually look in the later rounds and they have tons of picks. Well, this time, no picks in the fourth, no picks in the sixth, no picks in the seventh, one pick in the fifth. They did things differently this year. Instead of trading and adding picks, they traded to acquire players. Now, the first day, they made the sexy choices. Your Chandler Jones and your Dante Hightowers. Day two is a little bit different. These guys, maybe we don't know much about. You have Tavon Wilson, a free safety. Now, he's a big safety. 
The Patriots have had issues in that area. Uh, Brandon Merriweather has left. They're trying to replace him. They have not been successful, and their secondary is suspect. So you bring in Tavon uh, Wilson. He's a big guy, and hopefully he can remedy them at safety. You've got New England now looking at Jake Beckett, defensive end out of Arkansas. Again, this is a reach, but they don't have many picks, so they got to get guys that they really want. One thing I like about this guy, though, is he has a high motor, and Belichick likes those type of guys. Now, I've called them the AFC reach. That's one man's opinion. Let's see what everyone else thinks about this division in their draft. Jerry, right back on the hot seat with the Bills. How do you think they did? I'm going to give them a C. It's an A for Cordy Glenn. First round talent, falls to the second round. He can play multiple positions. He's going to be a good player. But then you got this Graham guy. That's an F. You know, they could have had him a lot later. So I'll meet them in the middle and give him a C. All right. I got the Dolphins. I really like the Jonathan Martin pick. Uh, they need a right, a right tackle. He can slide right in. Uh, great hands, quick feet, smart guy. Less impressed by Olivier Vernon. I think that that was just basically, hey, he's nearby. He, I am not impressed by his college career. I do like trading down for uh, uh, an athletic tight end, uh, pa pass catcher tight end. I'll give him a B, B plus area. Um, intern Mike, you love the Jets. Talk to me. Of the Jets. The, the Jets went speed. You know, they got Stephen Hill. He's a deep threat that's going to line up against Antonio Holmes. Very important. Then they go to Mario Davis. He's a quick linebacker. He can chase down the running backs. That's going to shore up the, the run defense that was actually pitiful for the, for the Jets last season. Great. I, I, I like it. I don't love it. B, food fats. I think Bill Belichick is losing it. Uh -oh. I think he reached way too far for Wilson, about four rounds too far for Wilson. Uh, Beckett's okay, but I just there it just does nothing for me. I'm, I got to give him a D. Oh, burn, Jimmy, Jimmy. What do you guys think? Comment below. Subscribe to Destination. We got so many draft videos. We'll catch you soon. A D. The hoodie would be mad at you. Right the, now. the hoodie is not pleased. He is not pleased. <laughs>